The Wheat School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by CNMC, Syngenta Canada, and the Alberta Wheat Commission. Welcome to Real Agriculture's Wheat School series. I'm Kara Oosterhouse. In this episode, I talked to Kelly Turkington, who is a plant pathologist with Agriculture and Agri-Food Canada in Lacombe, Alberta. Kelly and I talk about fusarium head blight in your wheat crop, when to scout for it, when to spray for it, and what exactly it can do to the overall grade of your wheat crop. Yeah, we've started a series of trials uh, in wheat looking at trying to tweak the management of, of the disease. It, it's a real challenge. Uh, currently, the tools that we have access to uh, only provide suppression at best and then and in a situation where you have a high risk uh, even using a combination of a resistant variety a fungicide application and avoiding wheat on wheat rotations producers still see significant challenges in terms of yield reduction grade reduction and mycotoxin contamination so what does it actually do for yield reduction do you have numbers that way so if you look at, at yield reductions, it really depends on the stage that the, the pathogen infects the crop. So if it's right close to or shortly after uh, head emergence, right at the start of anthesis, the impact can be quite significant. So you're probably looking at anywhere from 10 to 30% yield loss. But more importantly, you'll have a lot of downgrading due to the presence of fusarium damaged kernels in your harvested grain. So what can you tell me about fungicide timing? So fungicide timing, I think, is something that we may be able to look at tweaking for fusarium head blight. Uh, if you look at the current recommendations for wheat, for instance, it's the spray window starts at 75% head emergence through to about three to four days after head emergence at the start of anthesis. So where you have 50% of the main stem heads showing anthers. The issue with that window is I think it starts a bit too early. And at that stage, you still have 25% of the heads in the boot, which means that 25% of the heads, if you spray at that stage, are not protected at all. And then in barley, it's, it's even worse. I think the recommended window is starts at about 70% head emergence, which means you've got 30% of the heads in the boot that are not protected. So certainly timing is important. I think the key thing to focus on is ensuring you get good, application and coverage on the tissues you want to protect so the head tissues themselves so what do you recommend for timing then if not that so window? I, I would say if you look at some of the recent uh, research out of the US some of our current uh, information that we have here I would be uh, inclined to say don't get too eager to put on a fungicide you, you should wait until you have full head emergence and then hit that target with uh, good application technology and a good chemical. If you put it on a bit too early, you might see that your level of efficacy uh, and control is not what you want to see. So uh, the other thing is that if you look at the more recent information out of the states, actually delaying application is not going to, to be a, a, a negative. And in fact, the level of control and, and reduction in dawn can be quite comparable, if not even better, than putting a fungicide on right at the start of anthesis. So can you tell me about the different strains of fusarium head blight and what they look like? So if you look at fusarium in general, you look at the symptoms in the field, especially on wheat, they're quite distinct. Uh, the challenge is that often in the field you can't tell which species of, of fusarium that you're dealing with. So. Traditionally in Alberta, it would be a mixture of different species, mainly Fusarium avenaceum, Fusarium calmorum. Unfortunately, now over the last 10 years or so, we're seeing much more Griminiarum. So it takes a lab test uh, to figure out what species of Fusarium you have on the head in the standing crop. Usually you're out in the crop just at the tail end of the milk stage, start of early dough. You can see the nice symptom development. Uh, but if you're in an area where Fusarium griminiarum is well established, chances are the symptoms that you're seeing are largely due to Fusarium griminiarum. And what does that do for the final grade of the crop? So if you look at the infection, if it occurs close to the start of anthesis, you get really shriveled kernels. And, and in most cases, those will get blown out the back of the combine. So they may not necessarily get taken up during the harvesting operation. If you get infections that occur a little later, you'll still get that chalky white kernel appearance. It won't be as shriveled, 
And those are the things that are going to be picked up by the elevator and the, the graders. And, and those are the, the kernels that they will identify as being fusarium damaged kernels. And with a Canadian Western Red Spring, for instance, the limit in terms of fusarium damaged kernels in the grain is 0.25% on a weight basis. So very quickly you can go from a number one to a number two, and in fact even down to a number three, depending on the, the level of fusarium damaged kernel. Anything else you'd like to add? No, I, I would just say um, in terms of assessing risk with fusarium, we've got some new tools, mainly the weather risk maps. Uh, I would utilize those. I would look at the past history of the disease that you have in your farm or neighboring farms. Have you detected fusarium griminiarum? And the risk maps, I would start following those once the crop is past flag leaf emergence. Not to spray at that stage, but it gives you an indication of whether there's a risk building and whether you'll need to be in that crop as soon after heading as possible to get a fungicide on. So you get prepared to, to, to pull the trigger. If you wait until head emergence and anthesis and you look at the, the risk maps, you might find that, that you've got a very short window to arrange for chemical, an applicator, and so on. And how do the environmental conditions play into it? Uh, they're huge. It's mainly driven by moisture. So uh, rainfall and high relative humidity. And if you look at the states and the forecasting systems they have there, uh, they're looking predominantly now at relative humidity. So they look at the average relative humidity during the past uh, two weeks. And if it's above a certain threshold, it moves from a low risk to a, a moderate risk and then from a moderate to a high risk. Okay, awesome, thank you very much. Very good, thank you.